Hey there, Josh here for EEWeb. Today we're going to go over a new tool that was created by Atmel called Start, Atmel Start. If you go to start.atmel.com, it's a tool that is helpful in configuring your microcontroller project, taking care of that foundational code that seems to take up so much of our time but is not differentiating in any way. So with this web-based tool, you can go in, choose your microcontroller, and you can basically say, I want my I.O. to be set up this way, I want my clock to be configured in this way, I want to use these certain peripherals and it'll automatically create the code. And this is pretty interesting because it uh, has the opportunity to save a lot of time and get people kick-started really quickly on exactly what they need to do. Let's just go through this. So create new project. There's a couple of different evaluation boards here, the SAM C21 Explain Pro, and you can either click on these and it'll automatically select the exact device, or you can say custom board and go in and choose the device that you'd like. Now you can either create a new project or open an example. So we'll go through these. You have the LED flasher, a mono text example. And if you open the example, it'll probably show um, exactly how to do it. But I think in this case, let's just go with a new project. I'm going to choose something quite randomly. The at Sam D21 E17A, I'm gonna create a new project. Okay, so it's loading all the pads, the pins, the modules, and everything necessary. Now something that they had said uh, in the documentation they gave me is that that example code was set up for specific boards. However, if you want to use those examples, you can actually reconfigure it for any board. So that's kind of a, an interesting thing that something you can take advantage of when you're looking at this and playing with this tool. Here, I opened up an example for the pin uh, MUX configurator. You can see that it's still a very nice interface with a good graphic representation of the chip corresponding with the text pins on the left. You can select each pin and very easily and very quickly change any configurable pin to exactly what you need. So let's go back to the dashboard. Let's look at the clock configurator. All right, so here we have the clock configurator. And this is pretty interesting. This is a really good and clear way with a GUI interface of setting up the clock. You have your oscillators, your sources, and then uh, connected to your CPU to show you exactly how it flows. It also has the dotted lines versus the solid lines to show what is actually connected and what is um, initialized. So next we're gonna go into the add software components. We're going to look at the code generation and exactly how you set up some of these peripherals. So I'm gonna click add software component. You, you can see here, uh, watchdog timer, timer, I squared C, DMA, DAC, uh, all of these things that m almost everybody uses in their code. So I personally, have an ADC and it feels like every single one of my projects. So I am going to add an ADC. I'm going to double click here. You can see the number just went up. And I can add other things as well or more ADCs. But for right now, just to go through this, I'm going to have the one ADC. Let's add the component. Now it's going to take its time and add the ADC. And then I'm going to go here. And this is how I can actually change it. I can say which pin I would actually like to have the ADC to be on. Um, use which clock generator, and I can go through and make all of the changes, all of the settings that I typically need for an ADC, but again, it's in a very straightforward, easy to use GUI interface. And we've got the advanced configurations if you need to get that into detail, and if not, you just get rid of that and you don't even have to worry about it. So when we click on export software components, you can see, as mentioned earlier, you can export this to multiple different IDEs, not just Atmel Studio 7. So whatever you use and you're most comfortable with, uh, you can export it for that. And it even shows here if you want to go to IAR, you just have to include the IAR.IPCF file. And so let's just do this right now. Download the pack. It's all online, so you get all the benefits of a cloud-based tool without any of the drawbacks in terms of privacy. And that it can be automatically updated, it can be improved without any user, um, user actions required. It also allows you to import and export the files as you need to. So as long as you don't change those auto-generated files, and you say, ah, oh, you know, this pin is not going to work, you can bring it back in here, it automatically loads all that up, you make the change, export it, put it back in your project, and you're good to go. Very, very, very simple. And finally, it creates all the non-differentiating code. So all that code that typically spend, you spend 60, 70, or 80 percent of your time creating drivers for your ADC, for your PWM module, all of that stuff is taken care of 
comparatively instantaneously and makes things a lot simpler. So I believe Atmel Start has created a really interesting tool here and something that's really going to help people out in terms of making their projects faster and more robust in terms of faster development time. And I really enjoy their interface that I think it's very clean, very easy to use, and hopefully it can help you in your project. So if you want to learn more about it, go to start.atmail.com. It's a free tool and see if it helps you in your next project.